Hello, and welcome to the listening room at Spirit Source Connect. My name is Suzanne Goulet, and each week I'll be speaking to you about new spirituality and how it can increase your awareness of your divine connection to Source. You'll be offered insights, tools, and techniques so that you may improve, expand, and accelerate your spiritual growth. For more information and a free gift, please visit spiritsourceconnect.com. Enjoy! For myself personally, it's just so important to be able to connect with other spiritually minded individuals around the world. This is our time. This is our time to rise to the occasion of assisting humanity and getting through what some perceive to be very difficult times, but in actuality, what we're going through is simply a transition. And for some, change is hard. But for some of us who have been on a spiritual path for some time, we have experienced all kinds of change all kinds of dramatic shifts in our lives. If you've been on a path for a while, maybe you worked on this in the 80s or in the 90s, or maybe you're new to your spiritual path, but you know that life delivers you challenges so that you can learn how to connect with a deeper and higher part of yourself to manage those challenges. And now that you are practiced and you are well practiced with managing shifts and change and creating your life as the way that you would like to have it, you're being called upon to act as a model and as an example for others who may not have been on the path as long as you have. Be liberal in spreading the word about this so that we begin to connect on a global scale with assisting humanity in looking at their spiritual path, paying attention to it, doing their spiritual work on a daily basis so that we can all begin to improve our own lives and the lives of others around us. What I'm going to be focusing on in my talk today is work, money, and fear, and turning those into being in right livelihood and feeling that full passion flowing through you, coming into a place of peace around money and your situation, whether you are struggling to make ends meet or you're a multimillionaire and may have gone through some major shifts in the past couple of years with your assets. It doesn't matter at what level you are with your prosperity. We all have growth that we can achieve in the area of money. And finally, the subject of fear. And it's another element that is part of who we are and it's acknowledging it that it allows us to rediscover the courage that we have inside to move through anything that is our particular area of growth right now. So these subjects are, are quite vast, and I'm going to touch on some aspects of each of them, and hopefully that will bring you some insights into your own situation. I'm going to then conclude each section each section should last about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm going to conclude each section with a short meditative visualization that I'm going to ask Spirit to come in and assist me with. The purpose for this is that we're going to be traveling into the subconscious areas of your mind and of your consciousness and doing a little bit of transforming there. You can call it healing. You can call it growing, you can call it transmuting or transforming. One word that I like to use, which I've got from the Course of Miracles, is atonement. And the atonement really is explaining to us that what we're doing is taking our own wrong ideas about ourselves and about our situation and simply correcting them aligning them back into God's idea of who we are. And since God is our creator, 
we can rest assured that there is only one right idea about who we really are. I'm going to be having these short one to two minute, three minute, we'll see how it goes with spirit, meditative visualizations where we'll be getting to the crux of the situation, hopefully atoning some elements around each one of these areas of your life, work, money, and fear, and seeing what we can do to make some corrections there on a subconscious level. And hopefully, we'll have some results in the next week or two from listeners, and what I'd like to do is to hear from you. I'd like to hear how things are going. I'd like to hear what kind of corrections you felt have been made. For I'm simply a conduit for the energy of spirit that's going to be coming through. And it doesn't matter if you're listening to this three weeks from now or three years from now. Spirit assures me that when energy is transmitted from the spiritual world, which is the non-manifest world, into the manifest world, it can travel to any time and to any place to be received. What is necessary, however, is your willingness to receive. Spirit will never bypass your own free will. And so take a moment right now and set an intention for yourself that as you're listening to this broadcast, you would like to make yourself available to receive both energies and guidance from spirit that will assist you on your next path of growth. Just take take a moment right now and quiet your mind. If you're listening to this while you're doing your email or you're surfing the internet, I'm afraid that that won't be demonstrating a whole lot of willingness there. And what spirit's main message continues to be is as you are willing, so is Spirit's work, messages, and effect on you is going to be equally reflected. So if you want to just put in a little bit of effort, you will receive just a little bit of Spirit's guidance and energies. If you want to put it all out there, drop everything that you're doing, give it 150%, and just quiet your mind and listen and receive, I promise you, results will become evident in your life. Sometimes it's an area of your life that you hadn't planned. Let's say, you know, like in the words of Janis Joplin, dear Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? You know, that is one request that you can put out there. But I think in my experience, what I've learned is not to set out Santa Claus lists to hand over to Spirit and say, okay, these are the things that I want. It is wonderful to honor your desires. However, when we decide to simply leave ourselves open to receive, we can find ourselves having healing benefits for instance, in the area of relationship, when we weren't really paying attention to that or concentrating on that or we weren't thinking that we were going to have a whole lot of benefit, nor did we desire massive changes, we're just fine where we are. And our main focus, we felt, was going to be work and money, and so we're focusing on that a great deal. And yet when we open to receive from spirit, we can find that Areas of our lives begin to make progress that we hadn't particularly intended. But since spirit knows you so well, it knows you on a soul level. It knows all of your lifetimes, past, future, parallel. It knows the very origins of your soul. And it knows the discrepancy that's going on between who you are in this lifetime, right here, right now, and who you are as a complete soul and extension of the all that is. So I want to return to taking a moment now, just quiet your mind, 
and give yourself this gift of listening and receiving today. It's not a lot of work to receive. We're just asking that you're going to quiet your mind, listen, and receive. Okay, I'm going to go on now and we're going to start the discussion around the areas of work. I'm going to read now from a book written by Marianne Williamson. It's one of her first books that came out, and it's called A Return to Love. As some of you may know, Marianne has devoted herself to the study of A Course in Miracles and to teach its principles to a wide audience. She has made this the focus of her work, and I have learned a great deal from her, and I have really enjoyed reading her materials, as I am a student of A Course in Miracles myself, and it's wonderful to see some camaraderie with that work. So I'm going to read a few paragraphs here from Marianne. Surrendering Our Careers is the name of the, of the chapter, and she quotes the Course here. Seeing your strengths exactly as they are, and equally aware of where they can be best applied, for what, to whom, and when, he chooses and accepts your part for you. And when, when it's quoted here, he chooses and accepts your part for you, that's referring to God. Success means when we go to sleep at night, knowing that our talents and abilities were used in a way that served others. We're compensated by grateful looks in people's eyes. Whatever material abundance supports us in performing joyfully and at high energy, and the magnificent feeling that we did our bit today to save the world. The atonement means putting love first in everything, in business as well as everything else. You're in business to spread love. Your screenplay should spread love. Your hair salon should spread love. Your agency should spread love. Your life should spread love. The key to a successful career is realizing it's not separate from the rest of your life, but it is rather an extension of your most basic self. And your most basic self is love. Knowing who you are and why you came here, that you are a child of God and that you came here to heal and be healed is more important than knowing what you want to do. What you want to do is not the important question. The question is, when I do anything, how should I do it? This is a wonderful passage, and I want to back up a little bit and recall for those who might have participated in my broadcast last week that we looked at one of the lessons in the Course in Miracles, which is lesson number 71, Only God's Plan for Salvation Will Work. And it's because of delving into this one lesson that I felt I needed to move on with this subject matter for there are just so many people here who are confused and lost about the area of work. In this lesson, Only God's Plan for Salvation Will Work, we're reminded that we don't need to come up with the solution ourselves. We can let it go and simply ask that we can receive the guidance and the information that we need to be an instrument to assist in raising the level of awareness and raising the vibration of humanity. How can we assist? The questions that we were guided to ask of spirit constantly were very specific. They were, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? And when we quiet ourselves and listen for the answer and simply release our own ideas about what we should be doing and what we should be saying and where we should be going, we become filled with an incredible guidance that can carry our lives and bring us to a place of so much 
joy and passion. And this is what I am referring to as right livelihood. Now, many of you can be in a lot of different situations in your current work. Some of you have full-time jobs that are part of a career that you've been working on for a long time, and you're happy with your career. You may be a university professor, for instance, and you have just dedicated yourselves to teaching students, for instance. You may have a full-time job in the medical field. In other words, you may already be in a career where you feel you're in your right livelihood. And this is fantastic that you are doing that. But I want to remind you that there are always ways to improve the level of service that you are giving and to increase the number of people that you are reaching. And for this set of people, I only want to say that you might already feel incredibly stretched in your time and in your energies, and how could you possibly serve more people, or how could you possibly increase the amount of service that you are already giving? On a practical way, I always encourage people to look at the activities that they don't like doing. There can be a lot of mechanical work, there can be a lot of practical work that you have to maintain. Delegate that out so that you can be spending your time focusing on how you can expand and how can you increase your level of service to humanity. How can you increase the number of people that you are serving? You're going to need space and time to receive guidance on about how you can do that. And it's important to understand how to let a lot of the little things go and to hire people to take care of things that you yourself do not need to be taken care of. And this way you're becoming a leader in your field. You're focusing on your leadership qualities. And if you are in a spiritual path, remember to constantly be asking for guidance on what you should be doing where you should be going, who should you be speaking to, and what would you say. I'm going to speak to a few other groups here. There are those of you who are completely lost about what you should be doing. You may be in a career already that is completely dissatisfying to you. You may be completely unemployed right now and trying to find your next job. You might be a freelancer and have various irons in the fire, but none of them are really taking off like crazy like you would like for them to do. You may be self-employed or you might be a business owner, and the work that you're doing seems to be taking up so much of your time as many small business owners do. And there are a number of responsibilities and obligations that you have to your employees or to your clients or to your customers. And so I want to speak to all of you in one group here, and that is that there is always guidance for you. There is always information that you can be receiving intuitively, and you may already know what the next steps are, but you are finding a little bit of difficulty in taking those next steps. It's something that you feel like you can't really put a finger on. You may be asking spirit for, well, what should I do about this particular situation? Should I take this opportunity or should I not? And sometimes you have placed it out there that you want to receive more customers or you want to receive a new line of work or you want to receive an indication of what your right livelihood is. And spirit delivers that to you. And somehow you have a tendency you can come up with a million reasons why you're not going to walk through the door of that opportunity. And this I am simply going to label as self-doubt. It's part of the ego's way of making sure that things don't change. That whatever is going on for you right now is simply going to stay exactly the way it is. The ego abhors change. 
and will come up with every kind of reason why you cannot walk through that open door of opportunity that is waiting for you to walk right through it. You will find ways to procrastinate. You will tell people, well, I can't do that. The economy is so bad. I can't do that because I, I'm a, a parent and I need to focus on being a parent. Spirit may be offering all kinds of opportunities to you because you have asked for them. But one of the things we're going to address later in this meditative visualization is to simply look at these resistances and heal them have more compassion for them, have a little bit of understanding for them, and simply heal them and let them go. And then you won't be able to think of any reason why you can't walk through that door of opportunity. We're talking about subconscious material that may be part of your shadow, may be part of the collective unconscious, you know, for many of us who are very spiritual, we have been held back for so long that we have become so accustomed to not being able to fully, fully express ourselves that we believe that this is just the way things are. But Spirit is here to explain to us that no longer needs to be that way. There is a huge shift going on. We can see it all around us, and it really is time for us to step up to the plate. I'm going to read from another book that really inspired me on this subject of personal expression, and this book is written by Meredith Young Sowers, and it's called The Angelic Messenger Cards, A Divination System for Spiritual Discovery. So I'm actually on page 118 here. It is important to be aware that your inner voice can trumpet out into your life and into the world, sharing feelings that grow from an unlimited spiritual reality. Truth, love, joy, kindness, compassion, and service. The varying darkness and lightness of the purple flower petals alerts you to the truth that your entire life is a spiritual search. Some days you will feel more directly aligned with the divine, and on other days you will feel more limited, upset, and distant from God. But the colors of God's love are always available to you. The divine presence is never far away, never distant from your problems and concerns. But the divine presence also doesn't accept problems as the excuse for denying love. The vast and all-encompassing energy of God knows that a different realization is possible for humanity. In order to see and feel God at work in your life, you need to find and use the gifts of insight and perception that are available to you. Hello, this is Suzanne Goulet, and I hope that in listening to this program, you found support and encouragement regarding your right livelihood. What comes next is a guided visualization that will support the shifting of your subconscious mind as well, and it can be found in part two. Simply move forward to the next podcast on your menu when you're ready to listen deeply to a guided meditation. All the best to you, Suzanne.